oh boy, do we have a great show for you today. But Foyce, do not miss out on this year's biggest giveaway. Now that's right. Check this out. For the first time ever on my show, I'm hosting a holiday giveaway. But do not make a mistake. They are not just any gifts. These are hand prepared and signed by yours truly, the great Eldersky, the sage from South Central, the Prince of Pico Union, the czar of common sense, Don Lorenzo. You do not want to miss this chance. Just go to winlarry.com and enter the giveaways right now. And on December the 8th, I'll announce three, count them, three winners live on the Larry Elder Show on Epic TV. I cannot wait to send you these gifts. Again, winlarry.com. That's winlarry.com to enter the giveaway right now. Herschel Walker's opponent said, and I'm quoting, America should repent for its whiteness, end of quote. He also said this, you can't serve God in the military at the same time. I'm not making this up. Now, with the Georgia U.S. Senate runoff set for December 6, Georgia Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock is facing growing scrutiny for his association with a man named Leonard Jeffries, a controversial academic notorious for his fringe Afrocentric theories and long trail of anti-Semitic diatribes. Please welcome Herschel Walker. Herschel, how are you? Hello there. How are you doing, Larry? Herschel, I'm doing great. Now, before you uh, give us an update on your race, I want to remind people that some time ago, you and I did a pro-life event. I was the warm-up act. You were the keynote speaker. And I told you that I was being wooed by people I respect to run for governor. And you said you're being wooed by people you respect to run for Senate in, in, uh, in Georgia. And both of us said, we've never run for anything before. We have no political experience. I think I told you the last time I ran for anything was third grade class president. And yes, I won that race. We both laughed. And I said, I'll tell you what, Herschel, I'll do it if you do it. And we shook. And I did, and for a while before you did, but I thought you were going to back out on our deal. So Trump is taking credit for you running. I'm going to take a little bit of credit, too. Herschel, how are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> you can have a little bit of credit because I still didn't know if I was going to run, but you know, I couldn't sit back anymore. And you read what Senator One Night has been saying and the things he's been doing. I tell you what, it doesn't fit Georgia. It doesn't fit the United States. So I had to run because of my Christian belief. So I thank you for encouraging me to run. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I felt the same way. I, I felt that I had to run. I felt I had a, uh, a patriotic, a moral, and a spiritual obligation to do it. And I think I told you, my father is from Athens, Georgia, was born and raised. Yes. And uh, one time I asked my dad, when you were growing up, my dad was born in 1915, uh, and you walked by University of Georgia, did you ever look at that and say, maybe someday I, I could go there? And my dad said, are you nuts? It never would have even occurred to me to walk near that campus. And here you are, a black man running against another black man uh, in, in Georgia, a deep South state. This is how far America has come. Yet the Democrats over and over and over again, including your opponent, insist that America remains systemically racist. Well, you know, what's so funny about it is they continue to want to take us back. You know, we've come so far to have someone like Senator why not want to take us back by using the statement you meet, you use that America need to repent for it, whiteness and the problem with uh, with this country is racism. And yet we've come so far. And I was telling someone the other day, I said, you know, the show Flip Wilson wouldn't be on air today. Flip Wilson was a funny show. It was a great show, but we were able to laugh and you move on. But right now, because of people like Senator why not, when they were not able to move on, and it is sad only because they want to divide us to get a vote. They care about vote. They care about power. They care about control. It's got nothing to do with anything else. That's the reason I told people now they're trying to raise money to buy this seat in Georgia. They can't win it on the policies or they think they right. can buy it. And I've told them Georgia is not for sale. So you come to the wrong place. You think you're going to buy this seat because I'm going to win this seat because the people of Georgia deserve someone far better than you are to be in that Senate seat representing them. Well, you know, Herschel, one of the other things you and I talked about is that uh, there's probably nothing worse you can be in America right now than a, a black conservative, because we refute the narrative that America is a, uh, is a racist place and you can't make it if you work hard. And when I decided to run, my campaign team told me, now you tell me anything and everything you've ever done or said that you would not want on the front page of the L.A. Times. I said, I'll tell you stuff I wouldn't want on the back page of the L.A. Times. And I and I and I, I honestly, Herschel, never thought that this would come up. I ran and all of a sudden I get a phone call from I think it was CBS about some racist thing I said about black people. And it turned out it was a joke I said in a comedy club. I did stand up comedy three or four times, Herschel, uh, uh, despite my serious 
uh, uh, outward uh, appearance, I did stand up. And it was a joke I told about F. Lee Bailey during the O.J. Simpson case. And the joke was that he was a closet racist and he said a whole bunch of racist things. And so someone found the joke, took out all the setup, and it's just me saying a bunch of things uh, negative about black people when, in fact, it was F. Lee Bailey saying it. And I couldn't figure out what the devil they were talking about. And I told the CB CBS person, fine, put me on. You're going to be embarrassed once you find out uh, what this joke is really all about. And they never put me on. But not in my wildest imagination did I think that was going to come at me. Same question for you, Herschel. I bet they called you everything but a child of God. and You had to anticipate that. Oh, uh, you know, I, I did. And uh, what's so strange is they made up things and it had been coming out left and right. I said they're throwing everything that's in the kitchen sink. They're throwing everything at me. And, and you know, and, but I, I prepared for it. I told everyone I prepared for it because when I prayed about whether I was going to run or not, you know, I was bullied as a little kid. But this race is more important than just Herschel Walker. This race is about crime in the street. This race is about this economy. This race is about open border. This race is about men and women's sports. This race is bigger than Herschel Walker. So they can call me what they want. They can tell me what they want. But one of the things I, I learned is there's no color in right and wrong. So Senator Warnock has been wrong. And, you know, he brought uh, former President uh, Obama here. He's coming back. I think he's here today as well. Right. They said is uh, to run, be a senator, you got to know stuff. Well, one thing I know is they've been terrible for this country. They've been terrible for this state. All they talk about is racism. And he's in a church of a man, a Dr. King, that said the content of your character, not the color of your skin. In the Bible that I read, God knows nothing about the color of your skin. He knows about your heart. So maybe we need to get back to having people that know the Bible honestly, talking to people rather than having someone like Reverend Warnock in office saying the things that he's saying, trying to separate people only for a vote. What's this? Holding in my baby brown libertarian fingers, a pair of my pillow, my slippers. And these are beautiful tan, but they come in different colors. And believe it or not, they come in different styles as well. And I've also got this, a my pillow. That's right. This is not the one I slept on last night. I have one that I sleep on. This is what I use to show you, which you can sleep on. All you have to do is call the number on your screen or go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ELDER. And then, of course, there is this. This is the MyPillow six-piece set. Towels, face cloths, and also hand towels. They call face cloths flannels in the UK. So if you're in the UK, I'm talking about a flannel. Again, call the number on your screen or just go to MyPillow.com, promo code ELDER. Before you go... This is a Giza dream bedsheet, the finest cotton in the world, not just in America, in the world. And Mike Lindell went all over the world to find this cotton, which is in the Middle East near Egypt. And it comes in different colors. Mine, of course, is white because after all, I am the black face of white supremacy. What other color would I get? But you have never been called that. You might want different colors. Also, beds come in different sizes. And as a result, guess what? The these sheets come in different sizes. So call the number on your screen or go to MyPillow.com. Use promo code ELDER. I'll be right back. You know, Herschel, uh, I've been called a, quote, self-loathing black man who hates his own people. I know you've been called that, too. Uh, you mentioned Barack Obama. He cut a commercial against the recall and against me. And I thought about his career, Herschel. Uh, when he became a U.S. state senator, he unseated a Democrat black female incumbent. He then ran for U.S. House. He primaried a left-wing black Democrat. Uh, he ran against a black man as a Republican. Uh, he ran a Democrat, of course, uh, to win his seat uh, in Illinois. He ran against a black man named Alan Keyes. Uh, I mentioned he, he cut a commercial against me. He come down to, uh, to Georgia to ridicule you. So Obama can oppose a liberal black Democrat and run against them. He can oppose black conservatives but nobody calls him, quote, a self-loathing black man who hates his own people, close quote. I'm thinking there's a bit of a double standard here, Herschel. Well, it is a double standard, <laughs> but it's a double standard all the way around, even in the media. Thank you for having me on and giving me a chance to speak the truth, because other media is not going to do it. They're not going to show it. And they're going to listen to everything someone like Reverend Warnock going to say, and, and they're going to listen to everything that Obama going to say, and then when they listen to us, they don't put it out. But I want people to know that, you know, when he talks about Herschel Walker, he talked about the wrong person because I'm always going to believe in the Constitution. 
I'm always going to believe in hard work. I'm always going to believe in that America's dream. But you can only get it through the Constitution. You can only get it if you're willing to work hard. But you can get it if you're willing to pay the price. And I don't think things should be given to you. I do believe in giving a man a, giving a man a fish. You feed him a day, teach him to fish, feed him a lifetime. And I believe in teaching someone to fish rather than giving them something. And you can help out my friend by going to TeamHerschel.com. That's TeamHerschel.com. I said it before you did. Now, Herschel, talk to me about how the race is going. How are you feeling? The race is going well. You know, they started early voting uh, a couple of days ago. Early, early voting ends tomorrow, Friday. And then the race is, uh, the, the election is December the 6th. And what's so great about it is we only had a month to get ready. So right now they've been hustling, they've been out working, and they felt that they were going to get this huge lead in early voting. They don't have the lead they thought they were going to get. So right now they're scrambling, they're saying all types of things. They, they're telling me, I, I think sooner or later they're going to say I'm not black. They say I'm, <laughs> they're gonna say I'm not black and stuff, and I'm going to have to go ch get checked for that. But they're thinking of everything that they can think of except the policies that they voted on. They're not talking about anything about that. And that's what the people want to hear. They want to hear how I'm going to get this economy under control. And I said, guys, I believe that we can become energy independent again. Don't let them fool you like we cannot do it in an environmental friendly drilling way because we can do it that way. We can do it better than anyone else. Don't let them fool you that we need to defund the police because the police are not good people. They're very good people. The problem we have is we now have taught our citizen to disrespect the police. So right. we get back to having some type of unity between the two of us. And then at the same time, we got to get men out of women's sports. They shouldn't be in women's sports and then protect this border. So we can get that done. So don't let them try to fool you that this is a new normal because it's not the new normal. Well, Herschel, they got to attack you because they can't defend their record on crime. Having demonized the police, now crime has gone up in cities like Philadelphia, uh, like L.A., uh, like New York, all because the police are, are pulling back because of being called systemically racist. It's called the George Floyd effect uh, or the Ferguson effect. They can't talk about inflation. They can't talk about gas prices. They certainly can't talk about the borders. They can't defend that ridiculous pullout of Afghanistan, which, is, which has encouraged Putin. All they can do is attack, attack, attack. That's what they do. Here's my question, Herschel. Uh, in the in the uh, general, you got outspent like three or four to one. Uh, is, is the money evening out now? Uh, no, it's not. They're still spending a lot of money. Like I said, they're trying to buy this seat. You know, they spent in the in the general a hundred million dollars against me. And I told people if they don't know how to spend that money because we're in a runoff, that means they don't know how to spend your money. So that's the reason they got to get out of office right now. They're still outspending me three to one because they honestly think that they can buy this seat, and I'm telling you, they can't. You know, ninety six percent money comes from out of state. It's not even from Georgia. So they're thinking that Georgia is New York. They're thinking Georgia is California. I'm here to say Georgia is Georgia. The people of Georgia know what I stand for. They know what I'm going to fight about. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue to fight. And you mentioned it. Go to TeamHersher.com. If you contribute to the campaign, if you got relatives that live in Georgia, call them up, tell them to vote for Herschel. If you don't have relatives in, in Georgia, call some people in Georgia, tell them to vote for Herschel because I'm going to help fight for this country. I, I know you've gotten a lot of support from people like Lindsey Graham. But what about the National Party? Has the National Party had your back? They have. I tell you, everyone has been coming in. I tell you, it's been, it been really, really great. You know, the National Party has been coming in to help me through doing a lot of things with the speeches. They've been helping me by going on some of the stump speeches. They've been helping me by putting in money. They've been helping me by raising money. And, and I'll tell you what, I want to thank everyone. I think they realize how important this seat is. And I think people need to know that this seat is very, very important because now we're going to have uh, even in the in the committees. All the committees will be even so we can we can try to tie things up there in the committees. We don't have to get to Kamala Harris, but she's going to have to try to make a decision vote. We don't want that. We don't want that right now. Let's keep it like this. And we're going to get into a 50-50 where we can make it an even committees and we can still fight from there and hold Biden in check. Brian Kemp has been uh, campaigning pretty, uh, pretty heavily for you as well. Talk to me about your relationship with him. Well, you know what's so funny is uh, Governor Kemp, I've known him since I was 17 years old. He and Daniel Dula has had a good, good relationship. The families grew up together. So I knew him when he was, when he was young, like when I was young. And after the, uh, the general was over, Governor Kemp brought his ground game in and started letting us use the ground game because everyone's talked about Stacey Abrams' ground game, but Governor Kemp showed that his ground game was better. So now his ground game is here helping me to uh, do my thing 
And also Governor Kemp has been out on the stump with me, doing some things with me. The other day we did a fundraiser together. So he knows that we need somebody in Washington to be on the federal level rowing the boat in this direction. And he's on the state level and we're rowing in the same direction. Where Senator Warnock been doing the opposite. He's been making it very difficult on a, on a federal level for Governor Kemp to get things done. And it's not going to get done like that. So that's the reason he's helping me out. And I've been having a lot of other people that are uh, elected officials here, been here helping me out. And we're going to win this thing. And I say the word we because it involves a village. It's not just Herschel Walker. This involves a village, and we got to come together as one. Uh, Al Sharpton, as you know, says that you are being used. Uh, who's using you, Herschel? <laughs> well, that's what's so funny. I think people are using Al Sharpton too much because uh, he seems to be saying whatever they want to say. It is amazing. When you have a black man or a brown man speaking for himself, then they said people are using you because they never seen free speaking people like you and myself or brown people speaking. But I want Al Sharpton to know if he can continue to talk like he's talking, when are we ever going to get anywhere? We need right. people to become leaders, not people that are going to become a follower. He's been a follower all his life. Right now, he needs to step to the plate and speak the truth. The truth is this country is hurting and hurting because of people like himself that has been in office a long time, never try to educate people to get an education and move them forward. All he tried to do is better himself rather than helping someone else. And that's what Senator Warnock has done. He tried to better himself. His income went up when he yet had made it tougher on every family in Georgia. Well, that's what Al Sharpton is. He goes up and income goes up while you're hurting everyone else. That's not where you live. Now, you were expected to do badly during the debate. You did extremely well. Uh, th was that your first time ever debating? That was my first time debating, but you, uh, you've you been with me. And I told people that people that ever been around me, did anyone think that Reverend Warnock could beat me in a debate? Because most of the people that been around me that know me knew there was no way he was going to beat me in a debate. And I and I must say this, this is not trying to uh, disper disrespect him. I said he was a one-trick pony. And what I mean by that is they told him the things to say. And he'd been saying them over and over and over and over again. So when he was on the pulpit, it's easy to stand in the pulpit and tell people about themselves. But when you have an across from someone that's able to call you on what you're saying, that he thought he can go to his go-to by going to Bible scriptures. But he didn't know that I read the Bible too. So when he started giving me Bible scriptures, I said, yo, wait a minute, wait a minute. That ain't exactly what it says. This is to say what it says right here. And I sort of shocked him by it. And you see his eyes get real wide because he goes like, oh, geez, I didn't know he knew that. <laughs> then he thought, and it was funny because I said, he's a one-trick pony. He had nothing else to say. And, you know, he talked about, you know, about the abortion, that he didn't want the government in the room when the woman is dead and the doctor is dead. And I said, well, sir, you bring the government back in because you want them to pay for it. And I said, right. you also told me Black Lives Matter, but the majority of the babies kill are black. So what are you going to say about that? You see his eyes get wide again. So he's that one trick pony that has people telling him what to say. But when you question him on it, he couldn't answer. So I asked again, anyone that know me, that been around me, did they really think that Senator Warnock could beat me in a debate? And I can guarantee you probably 100% of them told me no, because they knew he couldn't beat me in a debate. Right. And I, well, you also said there was a baby in the room, too, as I recall, yeah. during that debate. Uh, Herschel, uh, when I ran, uh, I got outspent substantially. And uh, uh, my opponent ran commercial after commercial after commercial, not defending his record on crime, on homelessness, on the way he shut down the state, ignoring ignoring science, on the, on the quality of schools, the fact that people are leaving California for the first time in 170 years. He over and over again had a picture of Donald Trump and me with our thumbs up. And it said, stop Republican takeover, stop Republican takeover, stop Republican takeover. And I said, in California, probably the only public figure that Democrats hate more uh, is Charlie Manson. He's dead. Now, in Georgia, uh, I'm wondering how has, the, has your relationship with Trump uh, affected the race? You know, people talk about that all the time. And I told people, Donald Trump is my friend. He's been my friend for since the 80s. And uh, it, was, it was talked about in a debate. And I said, you know, I won't leave my friend. But you saw what Joe Biden and uh, Raphael Warnock left their friends in Afghanistan. They left so many allies in Afghanistan to show that they were weak people to do that. And I said, I'm not going to leave Donald Trump because he's my friend. I said, I don't need him here in Georgia right now because I'm doing this race. 
I want everyone in Georgia to know Herschel Walker is doing this race. And if Donald Trump want to come in and help me, you come in and help me. The same as Lita McConnell, the same as Rick Scott, the same as anyone that want to come to Georgia to help me to win this race. I want them to come in because this race is too important to be here picking out, oh, I don't like him, I don't like this person. We're not school kids. This is about the, 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 this country. This is about your kids. This is about our military. This is about our law enforcement. This is about citizens of the United States of America. So whoever can come into Georgia to help me to win this seat, I welcome them to come. Now, Herschel, I don't know whether you saw the column I wrote about you a couple of weeks ago, but I wrote about this New York Times reporter who goes to uh, events with you, and he says, sometimes Herschel and I, quote, are the only African-American, close quote, at the event. Now, I saw this guy's picture, and I wrote uh, that he looked about as African-American as Mitt Romney. Uh, but uh, the point is, uh, there's no secret handshake. There's no password. There's no initiation fee. Black people are welcome to come. Uh, my question is, how have black Georgians responded to your candidacy? Have you had the support from the black clergy that you wanted? Have you had the support from the local black politicians that you wanted? Well, you know, what's so funny is, you know, it is sad that reporters are never going to print the truth because I have uh, black people at my uh, events and I have people that come up and they thank me for running and they say that they're in the same boat that I'm in. And uh, people call them out, but they, they see truth. And they, they come to the events and they talk about the events. And, you know, I have people come up and it's, it's funny because I have 500 people in, a, in at my events. And they say, oh, Herschel had this small event. When I see Reverend one I only have his, 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 <laughs> at his event. Oh, Herschel only had 10 people at his event. But everyone that's been to my events know it is a it is exciting. People that are energized. That's the reason I think we got this. There's a lot of votes getting out right now being counted. It's not because of Senator Warnock. It's because of Herschel Walker. And I think people going to see on December the 6th that the people came out to vote for me because they know I represent them well. And not only do I represent blacks, whites, uh, Asian, Hispanic, I represent everybody. And I say this here. If you are a Martian living in Georgia and you're president, <laughs> I'm going to represent you as well because I represent everyone from Georgia, not just because of your, your race. I got a phone call once when I was on the air, when I was doing my radio show, Herschel, from a Latino. And he said, you know, Larry, we need a we need a, a Latino Larry Elder. I said, there is. He said, who? I said, Larry Elder. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> right. You know, and, and that's what I told someone. I said, it is time that we stop trying to divide us with the color of your skin. But let's talk about you just being an American. I think that's the best thing to do. Let's get back to you just being an American, defending America, all the people of America. You know, and if you got time off, I saw in the Olympics, you know, and I, I hate to talk about the Olympics because we're going to boycott it, but that was a young lady from Douglasville, Georgia, that won the silver medal in the Olympics. And I watched just that little bit because the, the next person up was from America as well, who ended up winning the gold, who was a young lady who just came over from Canada. So she just got her citizenship in the United States from Canada. Well, in the, in the uh, commentator, they said that this young lady here from Douglasville, Georgia, that was black, was an African-American. Well, what was <laughs> funny is that was a young black woman from Canada, and they said, right. a Canadian. And I said, why is she not a black Canadian or African-Canadian? Why is she uh, just a Canadian, but the African-American woman from Georgia is African-American? I said, that is the problem we have. We want to categorize everyone right. rather than just saying you are an American. And that's what you are. You're an American. And let's get back to that. Well, you know, you've known me for a while, Hershey. You've never heard me use the term African-American to describe myself. I use it when I'm quoting somebody else. I'm an American who is black. You know who the most prominent African-American is today right now? Elon Musk. Yes. <laughs> hey. Now, now Hershey, Hershey um, when I ran, probably the toughest interview I had was a, uh, a virtual interview with around six or eight black pastors. Everything was going okay until I said the most important problem facing the black community is not uh, police systemic racism. Uh, everybody knows that uh, no profession is 100% perfect. Uh, there are bad apples everywhere. But the number one problem is the lack of, of children who enter the world without a father married to the mother inside the home. 70% of black kids enter the world today without a father married to the mother in the home. And Herschel, they went nuts. And they kept telling me about how many uh, uh, bad encounters they had with the police, how much racism it was with the police. I said, you guys are pastors. 
And the big 800 pound elephant in the room is what I just now said. But you don't want to talk about that. And, and it went downhill from there. Well, you know, what's so funny is I've been meeting with a lot of pastors as well. And, you know, and I get upset because I said, guys, you got to see what's going on. We have a wolf and she's clothing up on a poop pit that is saying, you know, it's not biblical. He's quoting that he's from the Bible. This is not biblical. Why are no one speaking out about it? And they want to continue to keep their base. And I said, that is fine. But the truth is the truth, whether you like it or not. The truth is the truth. And you don't have to agree with me, but that is the truth. And I said, one of our problems is we have to support each other. As black men, we have to support each other. And that means that you know, if, if uh, you see a kid and people talk about, you know, I have my kids, but I take care of my kids. All of them are taken care of. All of them are paid for. All of them would be always taken care of. But if you see a kid that you can help, help that kid. If you're an adult, if you don't have a father, show him how to be the man that he need to be. And I've always done that. Right. People say what they want to say about me, but I learned from my father to always be the man of the house, to always be the father, to always give your family what they need. And you do what you do. You work. I work hard. Do I give them the time that they probably should have? No, I don't. But uh, they always support it. Then most of all, I give them the education that they need, that they can go forward as in life and make something of themselves as well. Well, as my pastor tells me, uh, every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. I want to end with this, Herschel. Uh, I've heard you speak before, and you talked about how you were bullied when you were a kid. Who in the world would bully Herschel Walker? Well, you Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That was me? So funny. I told everyone. I was one of those kids that wasn't supposed to make it. So when I was growing up as a little boy, I was bullied a great deal. My mom said I was big bone. You know what that meant, that you was fat. And I used to have a speech in bed, <laughs> real bad. And so I never went out for a recess. I used to sit in a classroom, never spoke in a class. And people used to bully me. And because of the grace of God, I got a chance to get a scholarship to go to college and doing all the push-ups and sit up. But that is the reason, Larry, I'm saying that I'm running. Because of the grace of God, I got a chance to play football in the NFL 15 years. I got a chance to be on an Olympic bobsled team. I got a chance to do some amazing things. And because of the blessing God has given me, how can I sit back right now and let what happened, what's in this country happen right now without trying to change something? I said, I don't think I can live with myself if I did that. And that's the reason I'm running. Because I said, it's time for us to get leaders in Washington that's not afraid to stand up for what is right. You know, and as, uh, as, uh, uh, prolific as your professional career was, you don't even brag about it as enough. You have gained more yards as a professional than any other running back. Well, you know what's, what's strange about that? And somebody told me, why do I not talk about what I've done? I said, because that's only stuff. That's just stuff. What I've done, what I need to right. do right now is important. I need to show people that, yes, I was a good athlete, but you know what? I'm going to be a better senator because I want to be a better senator because I'm here to save lives. And the way I can save lives is make us energy independent again. Where I can save lives is to help people on the border. Where I can save life is move stigma of mental health out of here. Where I can save life is protect our kids in schools. Where I can save life is to help to protect our men and women in blue. So that's what I that's what I'll be rewarded for. TeamHerschel.com, TeamHerschel.com. Herschel Walker, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. Hey, Good hey. luck. Good luck. We'll talk after you after you get elected. All right. Thank you, Larry. Hey, I tell you what, God bless you. I tell you, you're a great man and keep doing what you're doing. You got it. Thanks, Herschel. All right. Now, click on the like button and hit subscribe and make sure you scroll down a little bit more and you'll see the little description there. Click that on. That way you get on our email list because we have been demonetized. I don't know why. And that way you won't miss any of our videos. And as I said, we have been demonetized. So we've got a donate button. Click that on. Throw a little something in the tip jar. Let us know how much you enjoy the show, and that way you can ensure that the show will keep on running. Throw a little something in the tip jar. Hit donate. I'll be right back.